weather's changing. It's starting to get nice out there, which means you as loan officer can actually go out into the field. Yeah, get some fresh air. Yeah, go talk to agents, that kind of thing. Oh, wait, don't have anything to drop off? Don't have a flyer? Remen's got you covered. Flyer Paradise, all branded to you, all kinds of great stuff. Just get in there, print it, and go. Click this banner you see right here over on your right. You might have to scroll down on your mobile device past the comments to see it there, or there's a link here somewhere if you're watching us on Facebook. Okay, so everybody was watching Tiger Woods a couple of days ago at the Masters. Frank, I didn't tell you this, but I was flying back from Orlando. Yeah. And when you went and used the bathroom and you come and you can look at all the, the monitors and the seats in front of you sure. on the plane, yeah. everybody was watching the Masters. The Masters. Right. Now this was interesting because the four and a half hour flight back happened mm. to be the four and a half hours that Tiger was playing. Oh nice. And we got when we were landing in Sacramento, he was just he was on his last shot. Really? Okay. Yeah, and he was going like this and the whole plane is watching. And he pulls back to put it. And right before it hits it, it says discontinue service. That happened to us. We were watching the we watched Red Sox win the World Series. I don't, maybe you yeah. weren't on that flight, were you? No. Yeah, exact same thing. We're landing. We're pulling it, and right before they win it, discontinue. We're like, oh, the whole plane. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. So anyway, it, went, it was on 20% of all TVs in the country. So, anyways, everybody saw this. At Tiger Woods winning the Masters, and what it really reminded us all of is really his greatness on the golf course. True. Now, many including him thought that this day would never happen and right. he would never win another major. Right. Yet now we can say history has proven everybody wrong. Right. Mortgage 360 just came out with Anina. Anina. Yeah, those of you too young to remember Tiger's greatness are probably also too young to know what Anina is. Nina stands for no income, no asset. Mm. It's an acronym mm. like FBI. Mm. Or NWA. <laughs> By the way, that stands for Northwest Arkansas, That's remember. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a no income, no asset loan, N I N A, and it's being offered by Mortgage 360. Hmm. Now, on your 1003, if you're not familiar with this, you just leave the income and assets blank. I always like that. You don't state the income, right. so you don't have to lie. Right. You just leave, leave it, it blank. blank. Yeah, sure. Yeah, this loan is great for drug dealers. Yes. Yeah, you know, people with lots of mattress money who don't pay tax. Right. <laughs> Great for, I don't know, Pimps. Yes. Great for contract killers. Yes, it actually is. <laughs> and it's great for self-employed people who write a whole bunch of stuff off and don't show an income. Right. Like, you know, if Amazon was a borrower, mm -hmm. they would need a Nina loan because they don't pay any taxes. Right. So yeah. I'm assuming they don't show any income. <laughs> okay. But, <laughs> it's true. I'm not thinking that's true. It, it's totally true. They paid zero taxes. I understand. Now, they made I got billions of Frank, dollars. Frank, I know, totally, but they would need a Nina. Right. Uh, uh, hold on. <laughs> steady, steady, here okay. we go. Okay, see, it's kind of interesting, Frank. Mm. Our timing right now for this loan. Yeah. Think about our tax laws and all the changes. You see, small businesses now have fewer, if any, write offs. Don't I know that? Yeah, totally, right? And so, this Nina might not be the right product for what the tax laws are right now. Mm -hmm. So Frank, I don't know if this is the right loan for the right time. I don't know. But it starts to go down a slippery slope though, I think. Oh, it does. Right? I mean, because Nina's were the black hole in the middle of the mortgage in the middle of the mortgage market that led up to the meltdown from a decade ago. Now, if you were to point to one singular product yep. as the poster child for the meltdown, I mean, yep. I think it would have to be the Nina. It right? absolutely would, because think about this. Nina, no income, don't even state it, no asset, nothing. Mm -hmm. How do you do with the ability to pay? Kind of curious, isn't it? it can't, it, well, it's clearly non-QM, so it doesn't matter. Right, okay, now, 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 hold on a second here, Frank. Right. Now, before we all start going down, who remember, saying, here we go again. Yeah. Why can't we learn from our mistakes? You need to understand that it was only when the mortgage industry began to offer these type of no income, no asset loans back in say 2002, three, four, and five to risky borrowers where the problem came up. True. You know? right. So as long as you keep your standards high with no income and no asset loans, uh, these loans actually do serve a purpose. Sure they do. Yeah, well, here's but, a quote. Okay, so here's a quote. The loan is available for borrowers with scores as low as 620. <laughs> Go, Jackie. Which would firmly put the loan in that subprime range of old, you Oops. know, as Experian considers anyone with a FICO lower than 670 
deemed to be subprime. Okay, okay, so this is, I was just assuming we are going to offer this for people who have got like 740 credit scores who would be deemed a low credit risk. Yeah. That's not the case. So we should be saying, here we go again. Because as long as they don't offer the Nina loan, then maybe at high LTVs, right. that would be the other problem, then we might be okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay, according to 360 Mortgage. I thought it was Mortgage 360. So do I. Well, this is, a, all right. Just go We're going to go with this. Right. Whoever you are. Right, the agency Nina Mortgage is available for loan to value ratios of up to 80%. Okay, that's right. pretty high up there for a Nina. Okay, with well, a 620. Well, here's the question I want to pose to everybody out there who remembers the last time we went down the road with these type of truly subprime loans. Mm. Okay, so mm. when you have a 621 credit score and you're going 80 LTV on a no income, no asset loan, mm. the question we have for you is, is that too risky? You've already said what you think you think it is. Yeah. Uh, I kind of think it's probably too risky too. And that's yeah. just personally. Yeah. See, this product, you have to understand, is the byproduct of a couple of things that are taking place right now, which is permeating the real estate and mortgage market as we speak. Mm. And I'm seeing a whole bunch of stuff that happened into the lead up to the meltdown. So like so much else we're seeing today, it seems like we are actually engaging in the things that we've engaged in that led up to the meltdown mm. the last time. Mm. Mm. It's kind of a here we go again. Yeah. This is truly, Frank, as far as I can tell, the first real, real subprime loan, not an Alt-A loan, not a non-QM loan. Yeah, yeah. This one, by my standards, is truly subprime. Yeah, yeah. This product is the byproduct of, one, the belief that a hot market where the lender is optimistic about the market continuing to go up. Sure. This yeah. product only works right. if whoever put this loan together assumes that we are going to continue to see market appreciation in these right. homes. Right, because the hedge on, you know, a loan as risky as this is certainly mitigated if the market continues right. to go up. Right. I mean, the reason is simple. Uh, in the event of a foreclosure, the property has gone up in value and the lender's ability to recoup their losses is mitigated. Right. right. So. Because if the market levels off or if it retracts, then the investor would be exposed yeah. and they would never offer this product in the first place. Right. So there is a belief that it's going to continue to go up just like last time around. Now, if it goes down or if the market levels off, it's not going to be good in the event of a foreclosure. Right. That's where the lender's going to lose a lot of money. And there's a second reason, by the way, it's why we're offering this product right now. It's greed. Yeah. It's always greed, right? Yep. Good old, good old fashioned greed. Yep. You know, that's because when you write riskier loans, you charge higher rates. So there's a better return on your there's investment. You're money willing to take right. the higher risk on the higher risky loan right. if you're going to be compensated right. for it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Greed. Now, what I want you to think about is other areas in our market where we're seeing the same type of greedy approach. Think of all the eye buyers right now, mm. all these fly by night companies who are coming in and purchasing houses. And I say, frankly, take advantage of home owners and their naivety about what their house is actually worth. Right. And we saw this last time around and we are starting to see some of the problems of the last meltdown truly start to creep in. And this is the first time with a product, again, mm. that I think is truly, truly Very interesting. The question that we have for you, real estate agents and lenders who were around pre-2008 is, do you think this is too risky or is this a reasonable product? Because remember, the tax laws have changed. Right. People can't write stuff off. Right. So is there a need for this product? Yeah. Who is this going to appeal to? And with the new tax laws, frankly, it's just going to appeal to somebody who is lying about their income. Well, yeah. But you're okay. Yeah. Who would be forced to lie about their income? Right. right. So it makes it easier for that person to get a loan if they could just bypass that whole piece of the puzzle, right? It's, exactly. So there is a need for it. I mean, there certainly is a need for that type of product. Should I say a need? I'd say this. There's certainly a void that could be filled. There's a, that's a better way to put <laughs> you it. You know what I mean? That, that could, could be filled, be filled yeah. with this type of product. The question is, yeah, like you said, is it too risky? I don't, I don't know. See, I would have liked this Nina No Income Nas No Asset Loan if it, we were sitting at a 65 to 70 percent LTV, that's what I thought you were going to say with a 720 credit score. Yeah, a 620 credit score at 80 LTV. That seems a little high to me. Somebody is very optimistic about yeah, this pretty market. Optimistic, yeah. So anyway, what are your thoughts? Let us know in your uh, comments down below. We appreciate that. Do us a favor, forward, share, and subscribe to our show. Meet us for the first time. We'll catch you later here at the Natural Estate Post. Bye. Bye.